Hi, if you're new here, we're Gordon Marianne of the Time Is Now Adventures. We're here in the Olympic National Park in the Ho Rainforest, and the sun is shining, and we thought that this would be the perfect day to give you a full walk around of our overlanding rig, the bee. If we seem a little distracted during our walk around, it's because currently on the uh, other side of you are five large elk that they're kind of making their way a little bit closer. <laughs> <laughs> How's that for nature while you're taking a video? <laughs> so we're gonna start on the outside of the rig, work our way inside. So let's get started. So we'll start with the truck. The truck is a 2007 Chevy Kodiak 4500 4x4. It has a few upgrades, big heavy duty front bumper, big winch, some extra lights, and probably the thing that really makes it drive and ride good, the 20 inch Stadsworks wheels on 41 and a half inch Goodyear tires. One question that we get asked a lot is, what kind of lift kit does that truck have? It actually doesn't. This is factory height for Kodiak 4500 4x4. Suspension wise, all we've done for improvements is a set of HD King shocks, which really improved the ride. Underneath the cab here, we have a factory air tank, which is powered up by dual electric air compressors, which is an air compressor upgrade. We have uh, air output, air fitting, so we can air up and air down tires. And then the air also supplies the air ride seats, which really help, you know, being a 4500 truck. We've removed the back seat completely and built a platform. We have all our stuff in here for traveling, but built a platform so we can put things on top and underneath tools, barbecue and miscellaneous things we use while we're traveling. Since the cab on the Kodiak is so tall, the camper had to be spaced up 10 inches in the box, which left a funny looking space in between as far as I'm concerned. So we built these custom storage boxes. They're not huge, but they do give us a bit of storage for some extra things we bring along with us. They're about 15 inches deep and 11 inches high. That's the thing with campsites, you know? You never see any wildlife. <laughs> These guys are crowding us a little bit. Uh, a little bit. We've added an external valve on the dump for our black and gray tank so we can leave our valves inside the wet bay open. So that combines our tanks together since we don't have a regular RV toilet anymore. We use a compost toilet. In the back, there's a bit of custom work with a triple receiver hitch spare tire mount, which also extends out our hitch so we can tow our Jeep behind us. We have a custom aluminum deck that slides out when we're parked and a custom set of aluminum stairs that can mount either on either side or on the back to access the truck because it's five feet high on the floor we needed to come up with a good solution for that and this works awesome so because the truck camper had to be spaced up 10 inches to fit over the cab we had some space under here which we put a little door on we have some things stored under there as well as a full length step ladder the model of camper we have is a 1997 bigfoot 2500 series 10 foot 6 which is a four season truck camper we have our starlink mounted on the top of our ladder so we just take that up and down as we need it if you're familiar with these models of bigfoot campers normally your 12 volt battery bank is in this lower compartment i eliminated that in there this is just storage now and i this compartment was a little bit bigger and it was uh, big enough to fit everything we needed to fit. We have 400 amp hours of lithium batteries in behind the panel that the inverter is mounted to. We have our inverter and wiring mounted on that board. And then our charger that charges our batteries right there. The charger actually charges 
when we're plugged into shore power, which is pretty much never, or when we're running the truck and have the inverter in the front turned on, then that powers up the camper just like shore power would. The um, Starlink router, we don't really have mounted yet. We've just been using it in here when we do have it up. Uh, everything else is pretty standard here, other than in the propane tank bay, bay, I changed the regulator out for an auto switching, so we don't run out of propane. It'll just auto switch to the second tank whenever we run out. And in the uh, front of the truck, we added a big custom center console with a 1000 watt sine wave inverter mounted on the front of it. So that'll give us AC power while we're driving and also powers up the shore power on our truck camper to run our charger when we're driving. If we're lacking in sunshine, we can charge without sun. You're getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> and then probably the best part of it, the cool Bigfoot dude custom sticker up top. And we added a few stripes just to make it match the truck a little better. As well as our Time Is Now Adventure stickers on the side and the back. Along with the uh, electrical bay with the lithium batteries, we also have a thousand watts of solar on the roof. I showed you our inverter and battery bay on the outside. Due to limited space in that storage locker, our solar charge controllers went in the kitchen on the inside of the cabinets. We have two to be able to deal with the amount of power that's coming in from the thousand watts of solar that's on the roof. This camper has swing out dually extensions. It is a little wider than a regular dually truck though, so I've actually extended them out an inch and a half farther and it is a lot higher than a regular truck so i've made 18 inch extensions that we carry with us if we ever needed to take the camper off but if you want to see more details on that check out our renovation series behind the b we tow a 2003 jeep tj it has a mm, three and a half or four inch lift 33 inch tires and a winch on the front so it gets us out when we're camped and we can go and explore in the Jeep. So come on, let's go inside. Come on in. So when you first walk into our camper, um, to your right, we have our clothes closet in here and just a couple of extra drawers that basically have like our little outdoor tools in them like our lighters and whatnot are in here and then up in here into the kitchen original countertop no changes made um, we installed backsplash all the way around a couple little shelves some new lighting throughout the entire rig led lighting all the way through dimmable and whatnot up here, we have our pots and our pans, and all of our dishes are up in here. One thing we get asked a lot is if we whitewash these cupboards. No, we did not. Um, this rig actually came with the light, I think they're called blonde um, oak cabinets, which was awesome for us. Uh, we did do some upgrades to the wallpaper. The original wallpaper was pink and green and white and a couple of other different colors. And it is now just like a sort of an off-white rice paper. So one other thing that we did is we upgraded our tap. Our, it was the original RV tap to a household tap as well as our uh, drinking water tap, which is connected to our water filtration system. We have a full stove and oven in here. It is the original stove. Um, also range hood that has all of our gauges up in here. So up here we have our inverter and our battery monitoring system and a really old cassette player. <laughs> One upgrade that 
I did do to the cabinets is I put new porcelain uh, pulls on all the cabinet doors. In this cupboard here, this originally was a TV cabinet um, for the old little bubble butt TVs, but we've changed it to our coffee maker cubby. So as you can see in here, we have an espresso machine. Yes, we're those people. We like our coffee. <laughs> And down in here, this used to originally be the closet, but we've changed it out to be a full pantry. We removed the original three-way absorption fridge and replaced it with this unique 12-volt compressor fridge. This fridge runs solely off of our solar panels. It's a six cubic foot, a little bit smaller than what we had in our class C, but it does the trick. When we took out the original fridge, Gord discovered some unused space underneath the fridge. And so he installed an extra drawer for us, which is basically just holds our maps and extra little things. Taking you down to the floor, we pulled out the old carpet and original linoleum and laid down um, like a sticky vinyl plank. We have a lot of storage space in this Bigfoot. There's a large basement that you can access from the outside where we store our paddle boards and our inflatable kayaks, but you can also access it from the inside. And we have one small little hidey hole here in the floor where we can lift up the trap door and that's where we keep our shoes. But the rest of the basement, from here that way towards the door, is all exterior storage. We also have storage that runs underneath here, where we keep extra toiletries, and underneath each dinette, where we keep our electronics. So in our dinette area, we kept the original table and the origin original seat cushions, we didn't recover them. They were in amazing shape. I did go through and change all of the wallpaper. Also one big upgrade that we did in here was the curtains. The original curtains had big valances that were all covered in like a purple velour, purple and gold actually, with slidey curtains um, that went throughout. So I made these new custom curtains they are a room darkening thermal fabric. So it's awesome for keeping the heat where it needs to be and the cold where it needs to be. So these curtains, pretty simple. They just roll, roll down when we want them closed. We can do just a little bit or I can roll them up. and open them right up and say hello to the beautiful elk that keep watching us. <laughs> Another big upgrade that we did, well, actually, Gord did, is he removed the original RV thermostat, you know, those little janky ones that are really hard to change the temperature and have huge temperature swings, changed out to a programmable thermostat. So this thing is great. We have it set to cool right down at night and also during the day when we're away. Our bathroom door was showing a little bit of wear. So I wallpapered the panels top and bottom just so that it matches our headboard and kind of pulls everything together. Inside the bathroom is where lots of changes happened. So in here, we removed, there used to be a corner sink and the toilet both sat diagonally. They've been removed and we now have a composting toilet. We also added the beadboard to the walls, new flooring in here, a new little vanity shelf, as well as new lighting and wallpaper all the way around. We also upgraded the vent. This bath is a dry bath, which is awesome. So in here, when we're not using it, we do store our towels, our broom, and our laundry. The 
bedroom. <laughs> so up here, same thing. We uh, upgraded all of the wallpaper. We got ourselves a little bit of a feature headboard. Um, we also had to pull down all of the trim around our hatch and replace that. We replaced the curtains over here. We added a few extra shelves, holds our alarm clock, but also we have a bunch of charging up here. On each side of the bed, we have long side cabinets here, which hold our clothes. And then big deep cabinets here that just hold all of our little extra bits, books and backpacks and whatnot. So these are the same on both sides. In the corner over here, we have our TV. Just a little wee TV, but it's really all that we need. Um, and it is on a swing out arm, so that TV can be watched here from in bed or from the dinette as well. But the biggest upgrade that we made up here is our mattress. When we bought this rig, it originally had, well, it had the original RV mattress and it was awful. So we then bought um, the same mattress that we had in the Duchess, which is a Zenith green tea cooling mattress. Um, in the Duchess, we had a 12 inch mattress and that was like crazy comfortable, but we didn't think we had that much room here. So we only bought a six inch, slept on it and realized that ain't gonna work. So we bought a, a cooling memory foam topper that's uh, I believe two and a half inches thick and added that on there and now it's like sleeping on a cloud. Underneath our mattress for uh, airflow, we have, I don't know if I can get that up far enough. We have bed slats that you would use on a, on a regular slat bed that you don't have a box spring on. So yeah, so that's what's underneath to give us airflow and so far so good, seems to be working great. So that is our walkthrough of our overlanding rig, the B. We hope you enjoyed this video. And if you do want to see some of our renovations more in depth, check out our renovation playlist. If you have any questions or comments or a renovation that you would like to see that we haven't included in our playlist, please drop us a comment below. Thanks for watching. See you on the road.